Welcome to Go on the Run. Today, we're going to continue with our web application. So this is going to be part two. If you remember what we did the last time, we created a Go server and a web client, an HTML web client. Our web client was separate and we served it up using live server or you could have used Python, simple HTTP web server module. But there were two separate applications. Our web server was running on port 8000 and our backend, which was written in Go, the API server was running on port 8080. And so we had to make call and support cross-site scripting in our Go API server. Today, we want to combine those two and have our Go application not only serve up our API backend, but also serve up the HTML pages. By combining it, what we are able to do then is just have one application that we can compile, package, move anywhere, and know that, oh, well, we, we don't have to worry about having two servers. The other model is also usable, and sometimes you need to do things by separating it that way because it allows you to scale the front end independent of the back end or scale the back end independent of the front end, right? So either way um, works, it's just good to know both. All right, so let's jump into the code. So here I am at my command line, and what I'm going to do is copy the code that we already have for part one. And yep, we'll call it part two. I'm going to part two and start up my Visual Studio Code Editor. Okay, we should definitely resize that a bit. And maybe I should zoom in. So quite a bit. I think that's too much. All right, that seems like okay. And there we go. Okay, a little bit of space there. All right. Uh, is that too big? All right, let's leave it nice and big. Okay, so again, we had our client front end, which we were running separately, and our server. Okay, so let's see. Now that we have everything in a different directory, however, um, we should fix our include path here. And we have an, this is complaining because I removed everything. But let's say we put two. Now it's still going to complain. And remember how I get my import path. Well, if I go to server and API user, this where my user API is implemented, and I say go doc, it's going to tell me that there's a package here called user. And the way to import it is by saying import all this mess. So that's exactly what I'm going to use. While I'm here, I'm going to say go install. So let's just check that I do not have this install already. So I would do ls and let's just check. So tell us then go path and then package and then Linux. I don't know what is Darwin and issuer barrel and Yep, I don't have anything installed. So let's do go install. And then if I rerun my LS, now we should see go on the run. And then my web app part two package is there. Um, of course, we have to go a little bit more, but there we go. All right, that user that A file. So now this should be fine. What this tells me is that in theory, I should be able to run my application now. So let's go back up a bit. And here I am, I can say go run main. And this is running, and let's go open a tab here and local host 8080. Okay, so this is running. Page net found makes sense because remember, I am just hitting my web server, my API backend, not the client front end. But we want to combine the two. So Let's do just that. And so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to look at my code and I'm going to say, well, right now we have this main that go inside of our server directory because that was supposed to be just the server. Well, um, maybe we might call this backend later, but for now we'll call it server, leave it as server. And remember, we want this also to serve up our client code. So I'm going to move it out of this directory and put it alongside the server and client directory, this main that go file. And what I have in this directory are my three files for my client, which is index, CSS, and JavaScript. So I want those to be served up. And if I go here, we can see we need to register a handler. We need a handler 
four. If someone goes to this forward slash, let's say uh, index.html, it redirects them to slash client or you know client just our client directory client slash index.html. So that is what we want. So we need a handler to do this for us, this mapping. So one thing we can do, we can certainly write some code and then look and see we've been doing it already. What the user is requesting, open that file, serve it. But it's easier than that for us. We're using Go, of course. And so they've thought about all of this already. So let's go to Golang and let's go to the package net HTTP. And if we do a search for file server, we'll see we have a file server function here attached to the handler interface. So if you click on it, it tells you file server returns an handler that serves HTTP request with the contents of the file system rooted at root. So there is root. And here's an example of how you use this. Pretty straightforward. It should be file server and HTTP DIR and forward slash temp, for example, if you want to serve thing out of the temp directory. This is all the code we really need. Our code, however, is not in temp, but rather in our client directory, which is relative to where our main that Go program is running. So we don't have to specify any like forward slash or any other directory. So it's just the client directory again. We want if a user from the web browser requests on wherever we're running port 8080 forward slash index.html, it should go to client for slash index.html. And when the web browser requests, you know, on this port forward slash main.javascript, for example, it should go to client forward slash JavaScript. And if you remember, our index.html file is posting to colon 8080 for slash user. So we have that already in the HTML. So you don't need to worry about it. That's the only thing change we need to make. Let's stop this, restart it, and run again. Okay, it's no longer there. We've moved it out to here. So let's see. Okay, local. Run that, and there you go. So our application is running on port 8080, and we just run a one application now. We, not, we don't have to start up a second web server. And let's see if it still works. So let's say user, user at email.com, some, and then there you go. When we add a user, we're making a request to our server that's already running and the server that's also serving up our static web pages. So that's good. Oh, I didn't notice this. So we have a bug here. So we should definitely fix that. Um, there's some other things that we should probably fix too. And so let's go take care of that. So client, and it's HTML. And we certainly don't want all of these to say home. They should say users. So just say books. And we've done that in our JavaScript. Let's close that. If you remember, we were saying that we had to go to HTTP localhost or point to wherever our backend was running. But no, our backend is part of the application that's serving up our front end. So we really don't need to say any of this. So we should remove this from our both our post and get. And all we need to say is post to this endpoint or get from this endpoint or delete or whatever, call a RESTful API because the front end and the back end are being served from the same application. So we don't have cross site scripting. If you wanted to, we can go back to our user implementation and take out some of the, the, op, the handling of the option header, but we'll leave it for now. And let's stop and rerun our application. We actually don't need to rerun it because this is just a JavaScript. So this should work and the HTML should reload. So if we refresh our pages here, we should get the changes and there we go. And it still works. All right. But notice that we still have, and because we didn't kill our program, that's why we had, we still had the previous user. But notice that when I restarted, reloaded the page just now, what we had, we had that five there. And we want to make sure that every time we load our page, we actually get the current number of users. 
So one way of addressing that is to, like I said before, was to make sure that when we're loading a, our pages loaded, we call our get users function because that is already taken care of fetching the current number of users and updating UI. So we just need be, want to be able to call this function. So how are we going to call this function? We need this function to be called when our HTML here is loaded. There are a number of ways to do this, but if you simply go to your web browser and go to Google or whatever and search for running JavaScript on page load, and you'll see a number of options, but I went to W3 school and here's a simple one. On your body tag, you simply add onload equal and the function that you're gonna call. And if you look, this event is supported across all the major browsers. So that's exactly what I'm going to use. Onload equal and the function we have is get users. And I don't need a semicolon really, but no problem having it. And I'm going to go back to my web application. I'm going to refresh it and notice how it updates. Now, another way we know this works is, for example, if I open Safari and now I go to localhost and I load that, notice how it loads up properly. So we've taken care of that issue. So this is how easy it is was to combine our front end and back end into the same application. In the next video, we're going to try and do dynamic pages. It would be nice when we click on users here that we have a page that shows the list of users that we have. And so we'll do that in the next video. By the way, I'm gonna start posting the code that I've written to GitHub. So look for the link in the description below and see you in the next video. Take care, bye.